guys! Welcome back! Today I'm here with some book recommendations for YA horror. So in honor of Halloween, which is coming up really quick, I thought I would bring you guys some recommendations of books that I've read that I think are good options if you're looking for young adult horror novels. I recently saw a thread on Twitter where people were asking about this and saying, oh, why isn't there more of it? Actually, there's quite a bit of YA horror books out there. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 YA horror novels that I really liked, and these vary from kind of creepy or spooky to being pretty scary. Of course your mileage may vary depending on what things freak you out, and there is way more where this came from. This is just a selection of some of the books that I have read and enjoyed. Before I get into these books, I want to just make a blanket statement and say that because these books fall into the horror genre, most, if not all of them, are going to have some content and trigger warnings associated with them. In this video, I'm not going to get into what those are specifically, but if that is something that you are concerned about, I would recommend checking Goodreads. I have reviews for a lot of these books, and I usually do put content warnings in most of my reviews, and if not me, then other people definitely do. So if you're going to read these, I would recommend checking that out if that's a concern that you have. So yeah, these do get a little dark sometimes. <laughs> Let's get into the spooky horror novels. First out, let's start with a few books that are a little bit spooky, but maybe not truly terrifying. So for those of you who like to be on the light side of horror and want something with just kind of creepy vibes to it, one book that I would recommend to you is The Raven's Tale by Cat Winters. This book is historical fiction with some gothic magical realism elements to it. It reimagines the life of a young Edgar Allan Poe and personifies his muse as this kind of macabre, creepy young woman. And um, there's some like slightly disturbing, creepy elements to it. There are ghosts in here, but it's not like truly scary. In some ways, I think the creepy supernatural elements of the book parallel the real life problems that Edgar Allan Poe faced as a young man and the difficulties in terms of family relationships and some kind of abusive things with his adoptive family that went on. Um, I really like this. I think it is perfect for this time of year. It's not super scary, but it definitely has some horror elements to it and some creepier moments. So I'm going to recommend The Raven's Tale by Cat Winters. Another good option if you're looking for a kind of horror light and you like a good ghost story is The Rattled Bones by S.M. Parker. I really loved this. I hadn't really heard anything about it and I got it in a book box, read it, and really loved it. It's kind of a spooky ghost story but also a YA coming of age story that pulls on real life history and gets into some of the atrocities that were committed against Native American people in parts of Eastern America. It's creepy, it's got a ghost story element to it, it's also got family secrets and a little bit of romance. I really loved it. Again, it's more spooky spooky. It has some moments that are a little scary, but it's not truly terrifying. So again, if you want something that's spooky but not super terrifying but really, really well done and well researched, I would recommend The Rattled Bones. Another book that I want to recommend that I think is great for this time of year that's creepy and atmospheric and definitely has some dark plot elements to it but kind of toes the line between fantasy and light horror is The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. Um, people have had kind of mixed responses to this book but I really enjoyed it a lot. It involves family secrets and a creepy forest in a small town. It's very atmospheric and it's got a whole lot of queer characters in it which is also pretty fun. So I really like this. I'm excited to continue on with it. It mostly doesn't get super scary, although there's a few moments in the book that are creepier than others. Again, I would call this more on the light end of horror, but it, I do think it fits and I think it's perfect for October, November. My next recommendation is a short story collection and this is one that I've read and discussed recently and I really like it and want to recommend it again. This is His Hideous Heart edited by Dahlia Adler. It is 13 short stories that are reimagining the work of Edgar Allan Poe uh, by 13 different YA authors. So each of them is assigned a story and does a retelling of it. And so that's the first half of the book. And then the second half of the book has the original short stories by Edgar Allan Poe in it. 
I really liked this a lot. There's quite a bit of variation in terms of how creepy these are. There's a couple that are like pretty creepy and then there's some that are more just like a little spooky and interesting but I really really liked this collection and I like the project of it so I'm gonna recommend it and you know Edgar Allan Poe is also classic for literary horror as well so this is a really good option. And my final recommendation that is definitely on the lighter end of the horror spectrum is one that I don't own anymore but I read it and did really like it and that is The Killing Jar by Jennifer Bosworth. So this is a book with some like weird supernatural things going on and a creepy cult-like society and I don't want to say too much because spoilers but it's spooky there's some like real creepy stuff going on if you like those sorts of kind of cultish stories this might be a fun one to pick up. It never gets truly terrifying at least in my opinion but it's definitely very creepy and I thought it was a lot of fun. Alright my next recommendation is a debut novel that came out recently that is kind of a polarizing book. A few of these are polarizing. I feel like things that get into horror stuff tend to be kind of polarizing but so often I love them anyway. This one is The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. So this has like some gothic mystery vibes to it. It's definitely got some horror elements to it and some other things that I don't want to talk about because they're kind of spoilery. But I really love this. This one pulls from Patagonian mythology. It's set in a girls boarding school in 1970s Argentina and it's super creepy. There is a lot of really really dark stuff that takes place in this. There's a lot of twists and turns. There is a very big twist at the end that is one of the polarizing things about this book. You kind of love it or hate it. I loved it. I do have an in-depth spoilery review on Goodreads. Um, I've hidden the spoiler section but you can expand it if you want to read that once you've read this book or if you're just curious but um, I think this book is so smart and so well done and I just loved it and it is really really creepy. It's kind of scary. It's got a scary house. It's got some ghost-like things happening. There's some like pretty awful things that are happening to some of the girls in the school. Um, yeah, this is an intense one. Lots of content and trigger warnings for this one, but I loved it. I think it's so smart, so well done, incredibly atmospheric and evocative, just like so visceral. So yeah, I loved it. I'm gonna recommend The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. Moving right along with another incredibly polarizing book, I am going to recommend to you a book that is on its surface looks like a fairy tale but in actuality is horror. Um, this is Damsel by Alana K. Arnold and I like to say that this is feminist horror wrapped up like a fairy tale. Uh, there's a lot of really intense disturbing stuff that takes place in this book. It it reads as if it was a fairy tale but in fact it is a pretty horrific book that deals with sexual assault and gaslighting and toxic masculinity. I did find the ending of it to be really wonderful and empowering but you go through a lot of pretty intense stuff to get there. This is one where I'm going to say there's going to be major content warnings for multiple instances of sexual harassment and sexual assault on the page but I think it is fantastic. I think it's an important book and I think it does a really good job of examining the ways that we downplay the severity of these things when they do take place and the ways that sometimes people try to convince women that it's their fault or that they just need to go along with it. Um, yeah, so I think this is a really powerful book. I would definitely call it feminist horror, but it's kind of in the wrappings of a fairy tale. So yeah, another kind of controversial one, but one that I'm a fan of. My next recommendation is a retelling of a classic horror story, and this is one that I feel like I really should own, and one day I, I should just put it on my wish list and at some point pick it up, but this is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. I loved this so much. It was so fascinating. Like if you like interesting complex characters this is really great. I think you will especially appreciate this if you have read the original version of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. This reimagines Frankenstein but instead of it being from the perspective of Victor Frankenstein, the guy who makes Frankenstein's monster, it is from the perspective of his childhood friend and sweetheart Elizabeth. And it is fascinating, it is creepy, it is very character driven. Um, yeah, 
I loved it. I think this is a totally brilliant book and I wish more people would read it and talk about it. It does pay a lot of homage to Mary Shelley's original, but I think this fleshes out Elizabeth in some interesting ways and I, I yeah, I don't want to say too much about it, but I loved this a whole lot. Okay, and my final two recommendations are books that I actually found scary. Like, um, <laughs> like we kind of have a range here from books that I was like, ooh, it's like a little spooky, at least for me. Like, again, your mileage may vary depending on what you find scary or not scary. Um, but these last two books are books that I love, but books that also at least had moments in them that I found truly terrifying. So the first one is Nightingale by Amy Lukovics. Oh my goodness, you guys, this book is wild. So wild and so smart. It follows a teen girl in 1950s America who is put into an asylum by her parents because she wants to have freedom and doesn't want to be forced into marriage to her high school boyfriend who she actually doesn't care for all that much. It is a dual timeline narrative, so you get her in the past leading up to this and her in the asylum in the present day. And uh, there are weird things happening in this asylum, guys, like real weird things. This one has quite a bit of body horror in it. It explores a lot of toxic gender things. Um, I think there's also attempted sexual assault. It's been a little while since I've read it. But yeah, there's some like real creepy stuff that happens and it takes some twists that I didn't see coming, but I loved it. Like it was pretty creepy, occasionally, pr occasionally terrifying and pretty weird, but I loved it so much. I really need to read more from her. I know that she has other books that people have really liked for queer feminist horror, which is kind of what she writes. Um, but yeah, I loved Nightingale. Highly recommend. And my final recommendation is a book from one of my favorite authors. And again, this is a book that has stuff in it that I think is super scary. I keep thinking it would make an amazing but terrifying movie. This is Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. I need to do a reread of this, actually. I loved this so much. So Sawkill Girls is kind of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Stranger Things, except way scarier, super feminist, and very queer. Um, so if that doesn't sell you, I don't know what will. I freaking loved this and I thought it was super creepy and super interesting and well done. This is also very much a like crush the patriarchy sort of horror novel. So if that is something you're looking for, I would definitely recommend it. This takes place on a secluded island known as Sawkill Rock and it's kind of a creepy island and there's a monster of sorts that seems to be like kidnapping and killing and eating girls. Um, so it seems. Our three main characters who all have perspectives in this are very interesting and very different girls. It is quite diverse. One of the girls is the daughter of the sheriff or the police chief or something. She is half black and she is asexual, aromantic. And then we have two other girls who I think are both bisexual or maybe at least one of them is bisexual and they have a female-female romance that develops through this very terrifying <laughs> book that has some really interesting things that happen. Um, yeah, so this one could be like truly terrifying. If it was a movie, it would be so scary, but I loved it. It is pretty dark, it's pretty bloody, there's some like messed up stuff in here, but it's great. Really loved it. So there you go. If you are looking for some YA horror, those are 10 pretty solid recommendations that I would give to you. As I said, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just some of the books that I've read and enjoyed, but I know there's definitely more out there. Hopefully this was helpful. Comment down below and let me know if you guys have read any of these or if you have other recommendations of YA horror novels that you think people should check out, leave them in the comments down below. For your question of the day, let me know what is your preferred amount of scary? Do you like things that are just a little spooky or things that are truly terrifying and give you nightmares or something in between? I don't like nightmares, like there are certain things in horror that I can't deal with. I can't do possession stories. Possession stories scare the crap out of me. <laughs> Like, I can't do possession stories. Um, but I really, really like a lot of these. So yeah, uh, talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.